Hi, this is Paul Ward and welcome to another edition of Farm Talk. Farm Talk is brought to you by the Escrow Hub and the Money Store. I'm very excited today. Our guest is Susanna Underwood with Underwood Farms. Susanna, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So we are here at Underwood Farms in Moore Park, California at the Fall Harvest on the Farm. And you consider yourself a farm ambassador, is that correct? Yes, uh, everyone asks me what my title is and I don't like using a title and I don't have a title, but I would say that probably that that's the closest title to what I am. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, tell us about Underwood Farms. So we have been farming in Ventura County since 1867. Wow. And at this location in Moore Park, we have been farming here since 2000. I take that back. We've been farming here since 1994. And then in 2003, we took over the property and we do many events here year round. Mm -hmm. And it is fall time. And so right now we're in the middle of your fall harvest festival. Is that correct? So this would be our 24th year of the fall harvest festival. Due to COVID last year, we downsized it or mm -hmm. we, we made it a little bit more simple and we called it the fall harvest on the farm. Uh -huh. And so we liked that name and that's what we're calling it this year as well. But okay. it would be our 24th year of the fall harvest festival. So we've been celebrating the harvest for 24 years out here. Very cool. And so you've got a pumpkin patch, you've got a uh, corn maze, hay rides. Is that kind of all the traditional stuff plus some extra stuff thrown yes, in? Yes, it's a huge fall event. So uh -huh. we have acres of pumpkins out here and we have tractor drawn wagon rides. We have our animal center that's here year round. We have games and rides and live entertainment, themed weekends, and just lots of fun for the whole family. Very cool. And. Uh, Regarding the themed weekends, I did uh, read about a, a tractor event. Is that like old old time tractors and kind of a parade around the farm? So. Yes, so we upcoming, we have our farm country weekend, uh -huh. which we're going to have sheepdog herding. Oh, really? For the first time, oh, that's which cool. is really exciting. Uh -huh. And then the following weekend is our antique tractor weekend. And okay. we have the Topa Topa flywheelers here with all of their antique tractors. Uh -huh. We have three parades and our visitors can come see all the antique tractors. Very cool. I would imagine the sheepdog event would get, I mean, that's gonna be pretty big for animal lovers, is, you know, just I, folks from all over. I hope so, and my, my kids raise sheep, so I'm very interested in, in seeing it. We also have sheepdogs, so uh -huh. I, I can't wait to see the, the, in, them in action. Very cool. And year round, you are growing all kinds of different fruits and vegetables, is that correct? Yes, so we grow year round. Mm -hmm. We used to be open to the public from March through mid-December, and then we were closed mid-December through January, in January and February, uh -huh. but now we're open year round. Oh, wow. And that came about during COVID as well. Uh -huh. We really saw a need for people to come out and pick their own fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And so now they're able to year round. People come out here and what, they get a basket or a bag or do you take them out to the fields in a tractor or how does that work? So they can come pick in a number of different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, visitors can just come out and walk out to the fields uh -huh. with a wagon and they can pick their own fruits and vegetables or they can take a tractor drawn wagon ride out and pick and then jump back on the tractor. And then we also have school kids that come out and do tours. Oh, really? And they come out during the week, have okay. a tour, and then go out and pick their fruits and vegetables. Okay, so do they come on a school bus? Is it kind of a field trip? Yep, they come on a school bus or they their, their parents drive them and it's a full field trip. They have a talk about fruits and vegetables, then they go out on the tractor, mm -hmm. they go around the farm, and then they get to pick and take home a whole bag of either fruits or vegetables. Very cool. And for folks that can't make it out here, I, I hear that you guys actually now box fresh fruits and vegetables and will actually deliver, is that? We do, we have our Healthy Harvest Box, which wow. is seasonal fruits or vegetables. Mm -hmm. And it's a selection every week that they can get. Oh, wow. We also have our Harvest Gift Baskets uh -huh. and we have fruit, vegetable, and fruit and vegetable. Okay. And those can be delivered via FedEx. Oh really? So right to your front, right to your front Right door. to your doorstep. Oh wow. And we're also at 14 farmers markets. Really? Yes. Every single week, 14 markets? Every single week. Wow. Throughout LA and Ventura County. That's a lot of manpower. Yes. To yes, go to all is. those different operations. Wow, so from like 
Santa Monica all the way up to Ventura? Or? Yep, we have two in Ventura. We're in Camarillo, Thousand Oaks, uh, Santa Clarita, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we are at 10 different farmer's markets on the weekend. Wow, that's a lot. You've got a lot of animals here. I see there's lambs and pigs and chickens, all fun farm animals that kids can experience. Yes, we try to have all animals that are related to the farm in some way. Mm -hmm. So we have um, a mini cow, we have a donkey, we have two Scottish Highland cows. Uh -huh. uh, we have our Percherons, and we have four of them. And they, what is that? I don't even know what that is. They're a draft horse. Okay. A lot like a Clydesdale. Uh -huh. And oh, we do horse-drawn wagon rides. Uh huh. Uh, we have bunnies and guinea pigs and chicks and ducks and uh, even emus. Okay, very cool. And uh, this time of year you do the pig, the pig racing. We do have pig racing and that's a part of our fall harvest on the farm. Mm -hmm. Traditionally our festival, but now it's our fall harvest on the farm. Mm -hmm. And we have pig races on the weekends and they're every hour on the hour starting at 11 o'clock. How did the farm start? That is a great question. So we've been farming since 1867 mm -hmm. and my dad is fourth generation. I'm fifth and my kids are sixth generation farming family. Wow. Uh, back, back in the day that they, Underwoods farmed walnuts mm -hmm. and apricots and then it moved into canning tomatoes and we, we grew tomatoes for hunts. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the season, there were a lot of tomatoes left over in the fields. And so that kind of started our pick your own mm -hmm. operation. Mm -hmm. We would uh, put the word out to families to come out and pick the tomatoes. And then they would come out on, uh, on over Labor Day weekend, pick the tomatoes and can them. Really? And that really started our pick your own operation. And then from there, we started marketing our fruits and vegetables to the consumer mm -hmm. directly. Mm -hmm. And our farm market in Somis began in 1980. So that was our first roadside market. Uh -huh. Interesting that you're growing such a bigger variety than a lot of farmers in the area. I mean, we think of this as avocado country and lemon country, and perhaps you're into those as well, but you're growing so much more than yes, the typical we, person in the area. We grow tree crops, you mm -hmm. know, citrus, avocado, and then row crops as well. Mm -hmm. And wherever there's a need, we, we try and answer that call. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a need for blueberries, mm -hmm. and so we started growing blueberries that got a little saturated, so we moved to other crops, but we they're all seasonal crops that mm -hmm. are grown in California. Mm -hmm. So how did you, why did you decide to um, stay working on the farm? I mean, I know so many, you know, kids move off to the big city and and you didn't, you stayed stayed in the family, family operation. Well, I truly grew up farming on the farm. I went out with my dad farming when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was eight, my parents would bring home the produce that wasn't sold at the produce stand and I, my sister and I would sell it out of our garage. Uh -huh. And then I started working in our, at the farmer's markets and at our roadside stand. Mm -hmm. And then I went off to college mm -hmm. in Georgia and I wasn't going to be in farming at all. Uh -huh. I, uh, I was a Spanish and music major and then I auditioned to go to a musical theater school in New York City mm -hmm. and uh, got in. Mm -hmm. Went there and started my acting career mm -hmm. and got into voiceovers. Mm -hmm. I took some time, lived in Spain. Oh, wow. And um, and then I decided that I, I wanted to come back and do acting in California, mm -hmm. but I needed a day job. Mm -hmm. So uh, I started working on the farm mm -hmm. and we had just started doing birthday parties. Mm -hmm. and I was the coordinator of the birthday parties uh -huh. and worked with the tours. And I saw a need for marketing. Mm -hmm. I saw I saw a need to, to let the public know about what we were doing. Mm -hmm. My sister was a book publicist. She gave me some great tips on how to publicize the farm. Mm -hmm. And from from there, it grew. Right. Well, your calendar is impressive. I mean, you've got something going on, it seems like, every day of the week. And we're sitting here on a Wednesday morning, and the place is full. I mean, you don't, typically you think of kind of, I mean, we're kind of in pumpkin season right now, but typically you think of it as a weekend activity and you guys are packed. Yes, we are open seven days a week year round. Uh -huh. And then our fall harvest on the farm runs daily through October 31st. And we have a lot of school tours out here. Mm -hmm. Kids have a, a talk about pumpkins, then they go out and pick their own pumpkin. And we just have families out here or, or friends coming out to enjoy the open space and the fresh air and to celebrate the season. Yeah. And I did see somebody that was teaching a group of kids about a, 
about a young a, a pig, kind of like a Wilbur type yes. pig, and he was Pete doing the all, pig. Pete the pig. Yeah, he's uh, he's part of our animal show and our animal tours. Uh huh. So that was an animal tour that was going on. Okay. Uh, teaching kids about our farm animals and mm -hmm. the what they do here on the farm. Mm -hmm. And on the weekends we have animal shows. Okay. So every hour on the half hour we have an animal show. Wow. So it's almost like a kind of a mini amusement park in some yeah, in like, some ways, like a farm amusement park. Yes, yes, yes. very cool. Yeah. How big is uh, is this is this location? So our Moore Park farm is two hundred acres. Oh, it is. Yep. Oh and wow, 50, I didn't realize it was that big. Yep, and fifty acres the public can visit. Okay. And we have a great location because we are in the city of Moore Park. Oh, you're in the city. Yes. Okay. We're in the city of Moore Park, and we're very close to Los Angeles, yep. and it's it's a, a, a great location for people from all over to come visit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very easy on and off the freeway and you can be here in, in no time. Easy access. Mm -hmm. So we are in Ventura County, but we're very close to Los Angeles County as well. Mm -hmm. And is Underwood Farms growing crops in other locations throughout the county? We are. So we have another location in Somis. Mm -hmm. And at that spot, we have our farm market and animal center and we have pick your own berries. Okay. And we also have a pumpkin patch there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So two pumpkin patches. Two pumpkin patches, yes. Very cool. Yes. It's funny because some people say, um, do you have a pumpkin patch in Moore Park? Because we do call it the fall harvest on the farm. Right. And yes, we do. Yes, we have a pumpkin <laughs> patch. <laughs> we have quite, acres of pumpkins. Quite large. Yeah. And a corn maze. We have a corn maze. Mm -hmm. We have a cornstalk labyrinth, okay. which is my favorite because you don't have to think. Okay. You walk in and you just follow the path and then it spits you out the other end. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. How long does it take to grow? I always wondered about those. And how do you, how do you create that? So the cornstalk labyrinth is is just a maze that is corn stalks right. set up on wire. Okay. So we don't necessarily have to grow that. Mm -hmm. For the corn maze, that we have to plan ahead, mm -hmm. and usually we plant the corn in early August. Okay. Now does somebody sit down and map that yes. out, or is that all computer done? Now? Yeah. No, it's mapped out, it and is. then and then when it's when it grows you know, high enough, then that's when we cut it. Okay. And does it actually produce corn? It's a certain variety that maybe produces a couple of years, but it's not one that you would grow to actually produce corn. So what other events do you guys have throughout the year? As soon as our fall harvest wraps up on October 31st, we go right into the Christmas season. Oh, wow. Of course. Yeah. And we do a Christmas on the farm that starts the day after Thanksgiving. Okay. So you can come out and pick your own Christmas tree. Yes. And in the past, it was, it was smaller. Uh -huh. And of course, in COVID, we saw a need for people to come out in the fresh air and open space and, right. and to celebrate the season. Mm -hmm. So we decided to make it a little bigger uh -huh. and we do tractor tire sculptures so tractor we, tire sculptures so we have a huge christmas tree uh -huh. we have santa claus and snowmen and and all sorts of holiday sculptures created from tractor tires really yep are they cut like with or, or are they they're, they're stacked they're stacked stacked they and painted Really? Yeah. How cool is that? And we also have Santa Claus uh -huh. on the weekends. Uh huh. And this year we're going to have reindeer. Very cool. So we have two reindeer coming to the farm. Okay. So would you take the uh, the tractor or the wagon out to the field and pick your own Christmas tree, or they would drop you off out there to? So we have a tree? A, we have a Christmas tree area that's close to Santa Claus, but we have our pick your own fruits and vegetables. Uh huh. In November and December, so we have our tractor drawn wagon rides. Do you take the tractor out to the field to pick your own Christmas tree? Our Christmas trees are in an area that are close to Santa Claus. So okay. you don't take the tractor out to pick them, but you can go out and pick your own fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. because we help have things growing year round. Very cool. And the tractors are decorated for Christmas. We also have our, what we call California sleigh rides. Mm -hmm. And it's our horse-drawn wagon rides that the, the wagons are decorated for Christmas as well. Very and cool. maybe we'll have some Christmassy weather. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. And what do you pick in the middle of December? I never really even thought about that. A lot of the winter vegetables, mm -hmm. we have cauliflower and broccoli and the salad vegetables are available year round. So mm -hmm. carrots and um, turnips and lettuce, all those items are available, available year round. Only in California. Only in California. Only in Southern California. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> great. It's a great spot. And then from there, in the spring, we have strawberries. Okay. And we start our springtime on the farm. Okay. Which is our springtime Easter 
event. Okay. With the Easter Bunny, and we have a, a, a it's not a maze, it's more of a labyrinth, mm -hmm. like a barley labyrinth. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's our springtime event. Is there an Easter egg hunt? There's an Easter egg hunt. Uh -huh. We have a huge Easter basket, lots of photo ops. We'll have our, our animal shows and our animal races. Mm -hmm. So instead of just pigs, we'll have goats and ducks running really which is those are my favorite i like to see the different animals racing you have a lot of people a lot of people working here we do we have an incredible team mm -hmm. we work really hard to have a group of people that all work well together and also are, are great with families and kids and um we're i we're known for our great customer service mm -hmm. there's a little Kind of, I guess, you call it a general store or a little market here. Our farm market. Uh huh. So our first farm market was in Somis, and uh, it opened in 1980. Okay. But this one opened in 1994. It was much smaller than it is now. Mm -hmm. But at our farm market, we offer all of our fruits and vegetables, and anything that we don't grow, we also try and acquire. So we have a wide variety of items available for our customers. And how does that work? In like, let's just say something like a dragon fruit. Um, are there some that are just very seasonal or do you kind of have a year round supply of certain things? Yeah, definitely things like dragon fruit, cherimoyas, persimmons, those are seasonal and we try and get those locally. Mm -hmm. So uh, in persimmons you'd have in November, dragon fruit in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, but we try to get everything. If we don't grow it, we try to get it locally. Mm -hmm. But some things you just can't get locally and sure. we can't grow them like pineapple. Right. But we want to have that available so when people come in to buy their the, the local produce and the farm grown produce, they can also get those things so they don't have to go to another store to buy them. Sure. Well, that's great. So it's a very wide variety of fruits and vegetables. Yes. We also have eggs and mm -hmm. honey, oh, honey and uh, jarred products. Mm -hmm. uh, we have pasta and soup and wow. um, all uh, any all sorts of things that can help you make a meal. Uh huh. We don't sell meat, uh -huh. um, but we have everything else for you. That's great. So what do you sell at your farmer's markets? Well, we sell everything that we grow. So that's, that's what's interesting about a farmer's market mm -hmm. is truly the vendors there should be selling exactly what they grow. And we do, we mm -hmm. follow the rules to a T. Mm -hmm. So we're only selling the items that we're growing seasonally on the farm at that time. Mm -hmm. So I imagine you have your your regular customers that come back to your stand to see what's new? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're known for our carrots. Oh, really? Because they're so sweet. Uh -huh. In the summertime, it's not the time for carrots. Uh -huh. So they don't taste as sweet as they do in the winter, but we're known for our, our carrots. The, Those... the small baby carrots? They're Well, they're actually just the, the normal size carrots. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh -huh. they're just so sweet mm -hmm. that people love love them uh -huh. and in the fall we have our heirloom tomatoes oh, and uh, we still have watermelon right now but that's more of a, a summer item but we're known for our yellow watermelon mm -hmm. we also grow uh, red seeded red seedless and seedless mini so we have four types of watermelon wow. our specialty melons and then in in the fall we have our tomatoes or summer and late fall we have our tomatoes peppers mild and hot mm -hmm. and then into the winter cauliflower romanesco broccoli all, all the winter vegetables. Wow, that's a lot. That's a big. That's a big operation. Yes, yes, it's uh, it's rewarding. So, what programs do you guys offer for kids? One of our favorite programs are is our farm camp, mm -hmm. and we weren't able to do it during COVID, mm -hmm. but it's coming back in 2022. So we're very excited to have kids come back on the farm. Mm -hmm. We have 10 weeks of our farm camp. Wow, it's a 10 week camp. It's a well, they don't have the they don't have to come for all 10 weeks, but okay. we offer it for 10 weeks. Okay. And then they sign up each week for five days of camp to okay. come out and learn how to be young farmers and ranchers. Very cool. Cause yeah. you know, it seems like such a lost subject in schools. Yes. I mean, there are a couple schools in the region that yeah. would offer something, maybe a, a class at the high school level, but really it's kind of lost. Yeah. And we want kids to come out and see the farm and learn all about it and get their hands in the dirt and be with the animals and, and really, really learn where their fruits and vegetables come from because mm -hmm. many think they just show up at the grocery store and there they are. Yeah, they don't you, think about it. No, not at all. So we yeah. want to make that connection. We want them to, to see and learn about, about where their fruits and vegetables come from. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine at that age, it would be fun to 
go out and pick your own berries. I would think so. Yeah. I, I still think it's fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so Susanna Underwood, this was so much fun. Thank you for inviting us to Underwood Farms and for being our guest on this edition of Farm Talk. Thank you for having me. Farm Talk is brought to you by the Escrow Hub and the Money Store. Please join us next time for another edition of Farm Talk. <laughs>